Hello, everyone. Welcome to my podcast, Out of Office. This podcast is all about the story of travel adventures and cultures through different lenses. Today, I'm very happy to have Lottie on my podcast. So Lottie is my dear friend from my university. She's from Germany, and she has a great passion for books. She is one of the people that read the most books that I've ever known. And she also has a passion for traveling. She really loves road trip. And today, I'm really pleased to have Lottie on my podcast. Welcome, Lottie. Thank you so much for having me. Oh, my God. That was a very nice introduction. I'm feeling so honored to be here. Thank you for having me. Uh, we're also drinking buddies. So um, Lottie and I also have a bottle of beer with ourselves. So let's open it. Yeah. Should we like count it in or like just yeah, so yeah. we're drinking together? You know? Let's count one, two, three. Okay. 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 Let's do it. One, okay. one, <laughs> one two, two, three. three. Oh my God. Ooh. I hope you recorded that. I hope it was loud enough. I can just be like, clink. Oh, mm. so refreshing. I'm ready for this. I was born ready. I'm so excited to hear what questions you want to ask me, you know? So uh, hit me. Hit me with the best shot and uh, I will try to answer truthfully, <laughs> you know. Thank you so much for having me. Um, I'm very excited to be here. Of course, uh, you, uh, I, I guess you think that I'm quite a heavy traveler and very often traveling, but I can assure you, you are the one that always travels. I just always see your pictures on Instagram and I'm like, where is she now? Like you are, you seem to be like everywhere all at once. And I'm just like, how, how, what is her secret? I, I want to be like this too, you know, like, can you teach me? I want to travel so often like you do, please teach me sensei, sensei Lin, se teach me. But I can't uh, start laughing. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I thought you wanted to have like a bit like funny, you know, I'm a funny person. <laughs> just, uh, I don't know, just ask a question. But actually, so. I was always saw you traveling in the last two weeks. <laughs> and very recently, I have seen on your pictures that you went to somewhere and then celebrate event. Is it? Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, like, you Tell mean me like about the, the, the kind of Halloween event, you mean that? Where everyone's dressing up. So oh, yeah, yeah, like yeah. Halloween already? <laughs> so, so yeah, I mean, like, it's not yet Halloween, you know, but um, I was visiting my dear friend Anna. Uh, cheers, mm -hmm. Anna, if you listen to this. Um, it was so much fun. Thank you for having me. <laughs> And uh, yeah, I was visiting her because she's uh, moving to to um, Scotland for two months for her for her graduation and um, oh. for like training because she's becoming a, a doctor and everything. Very cool. And it was basically the last time that we could um, see each other in Dresden because she's moving away. And oh. uh, and she was like, okay, come on, I want to have you here. And I'm meeting with. Uh, all of my friends here in Dresden and we want to make like a little celebration and maybe we can make something fun out of it. And uh, we were all dressing up like very silly, like trying to be like, I think my friend, she went as Cruella Deville, you know, from this, uh, from this movie. And uh, I was trying to dress as a vampire, but you know, like I was even buying like this, uh, those vampire teeth, like they were super cheap. It was like, I should have think, uh, thought like uh, one euro for like those teeth. Oh, that's a deal. But like, they didn't fit and it looked so horrible. <laughs> I was like striving for the coolest <laughs> look ever. And then I got those vampire teeth. And it, like, I don't know if my mouth was just a beak or if it was just like for kids. Probably it was just for kids, but it was, it, I, I was striving for the best vampire costume ever. And it didn't work out. That was crazy. I don't know. I really enjoyed to be uh, in Dresden. You know, Dresden is such a wonderful mm -hmm. um, city. It has such a nice old town. And uh, I think it's it's uh, way prettier than Berlin, actually. So everybody who didn't uh, go to Dresden yet, you better hurry your ass up and uh, go there. So Dresden is your favorite city so far. So what is your most favorite mm. city in Germany? I have to say, like, probably my hometown, you know, because I don't know, I, I, my parents are there, my family is there, but when I moved to Berlin, like in the beginning, I thought like, I will, I will never grow to like Berlin, you know, like for a weekend, it's all right to be there, but like for, for longer, it's just crazy. And um, like, there was one where I was just like, huh, 
Berlin is not that bad. You know, I think I was driving down the, the Kurfürstendamm in the bus. It was like late at night. I was listening to some nice music. I think it was like uh, this song called Funky Town. And I don't know, it was so pretty. The lights were there and I was just like, huh, Berlin is not so bad, you know? So, I mean, I have to say it's Braunschweig where my heart is, but like for now, I'm very happy here in Berlin as well. I mean, there are so many nice places to, to travel to and that are so beautiful and stuff, but uh, Berlin, I don't know, sometimes it's just nice to be like, like to live at a place that you like because you can do so much stuff here. And uh, also yeah. a lot of friends are here in Berlin. For sure. And, uh, I don't know, you know, it's, uh, it's just like that. But like, actually, um, there's one very nice place that I often visited with my parents when I was younger. It's called Zult. It's like an island for the rich people, you know. The rich people go there to have a good oh. time. Is it a spell? Um, S-Y-L-T? Oh, yes, it is. It is. And it looks very funny. Like, if you look at it on a map, it looks very funny. Like, I don't know, like some kind of kangaroo, I think. Like, I always thought it's like a kangaroo or something. <laughs> looks like that <laughs> it's not australia or something it just looks like it you know and like mm -hmm. i often went there with my parents and i don't know i have so fond memories of it like off the beach of sitting there in the nice uh, i don't know the english word for it like how you say those uh, like, like strandkörbe you know it's like the german word for it it's like those things that are placed in the sand and that you can sit on it's uh, i don't know what is it called in english what is it it's called in vietnamese how is it's, it called anywhere? I don't know. Is it something that on the beach, on the sand, and you yeah. can, you know, lie on it? Yeah. Oh, it's so comfortable, you know. It's oh. so nice. It's a total beach feeling, what? you know. What does it call? Okay, some kind of chairs. Let's settle for <laughs> it. Like, I think everybody knows what we're talking about. and Everybody will have, like, the correct word, but we are just, I don't know. We are not bilingual. Just, we're just know. drunk because of the beer. <laughs> yeah, we're just drunk. I only had, like, two sips or something. <laughs> and I'm drunk, drunk of the love of friendship, you know, but like everybody will know and um, we are we are people who speak a lot of languages, you know, and sometimes it just happens that we forget some kind of words and we have to describe uh, the things that we mean. And speaking about language, I think I remember that you said that you also know some Korean words, right? Oh, oh my God. <laughs> I'm just trying. <laughs> Chicha? Too much? I feel like it's the basics, but you know. When I'm <clears throat> when I know that I'm visiting like another city, another country, especially another country where they don't speak like English or German, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm always like like I'm I don't know what happens, but I'm getting like all in, you know. Something changes in my brain and I'm just like oh, I'm so excited about this travel. I need to get the whole experience of it, you know. So I'm going to the next bookstore, as you said, like I'm I'm quite into books and uh I'm going to the next bookstore and get all the shit I can about this country. Like I'm talking about travel guides. I'm talking about like a book where I can read, like learn the language from, you know, I'm, I'm just getting all in like so nice. And um, yeah, when I went to South Korea to visit a friend of mine, we were like already very like fond of Korea. Like we were listening to K-pop and watching all the nice and dramatic K-dramas, as you know. And uh, I was like, oh, like, if I go to another city, I want to learn the language, you know. And, uh, yeah, that's basically the reason why I started to learn it. Like, I'm not that good, you know. Like, I mean, if I watch, like, a K-drama, I can, like, understand a bit. But, uh, yeah, I, I, I guess maybe to, like, fully be able to speak Korean, I have to course at the so-called Volkshochschule, you know, like, where you can go and just learn all the languages. Like, this is my dream. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, oh. so yeah, like, but uh, yeah, Korean and uh, like, uh, maybe this is quite funny, but uh, you will laugh probably, but like my friends and I, we want to visit Japan in like one or two weeks, uh, two weeks, no, years, of course, but oh my God, I wouldn't be ready. No, I first have to learn everything. But like, yeah, we want to go to Japan. And uh, of course, as you can imagine, what did I do? I started to learn Japanese. Japanese so, alphabet and character is one of the oh, most difficult in oh the world. Oh my god. Oh my god, you have no idea. Seriously, like Korean, like learning Korean, like the, the alphabet hangul, it was like a piece of cake. And when I started to like <laughs> it was seriously, you could learn it in like 30 minutes, like and I'm not like overreacting with that. Like Okay. Like seriously, 30 minutes and you have like everything memorized. 
seriously. I downloaded this app, Memorize, it's called, and I started to practice my, my Japanese, you know, and I was just like, oh, fuck this shit. This is, this is insane. Like, I can do this because they have, like, what, three different, like, alphabets? And the thing is, one of them, one of those alphabets, imagine, it's like, it's like Chinese. It's like kanji. And I was just like, what the, what the hell is going on? Like, I didn't understand a word. Like, I even bought, like, a book where they uh, very funnily um, show you how you can build, like, bridges with the kanji so you better memorize them, you know? It's like, it, it was insane. Like, I'm still, like, trying to practice, you know, so I can, like, at least say my name or something or introduce myself, but it's so difficult. But so far, I'm on my, I don't know, 23-day streak to learn it. I don't know. I'm just trying. On Duolingo. Um, right? like, like, it's not Duolingo. Like, my friend is on Duolingo, but, like, mm -hmm. I thought the, the little green owl is a bit too aggressive for me. You know, I, I think I can't handle this passive aggressiveness. <laughs> and I was like, okay, like, when I learned the Korean, I was using this app called Memrise. And it's uh, it's nice, you know, not that aggressive. It, uh, uh, but, but still quite nice. And you can learn a lot with it. I'm kind of getting familiar with the language now, but it's still so difficult, especially when you are memorizing like Korean words or like sentences and you're just like, oh yeah, and you, you just th throw everything together, you know, you're just like, what the hell is happening? I don't, I, I can't even speak German anymore. It's crazy. I just, it's crazy. But yeah, <laughs> that's my life right now. Just uh, yeah. getting all in or go out, you know. So now you are speaking English, German, Japanese, Korean, oh four languages. Oh now I like, can call you polyglot, as oh they call it. Oh my god. Like, actually, when I was uh, like in, still in high school, I also learned uh, French. You know, it was mandatory, mm -hmm. I think. And also, mm -hmm. I started to learn Latin. Like, and I, yeah, before you say anything, I know what you want to say. Like, oh my god, Latin. Yes, Latin. And I, it was so difficult. I, I nearly failed this class. I had to beg the teacher to let me go out of there, you know, just like, let me go. I don't want to fail this class. And yeah, I just did it like for half a year. And then I, um, I got out of it with a blue eye, you know, like when you're like barely making it, but it was, it was insane. Like Latin is a crazy language. Aber Cesar. This is crazy. Alpha, beta, omega, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. gamma. Salute. I don't even know if that's right. You know, this is like I nearly failed that. It's crazy, but yeah, I like to learn new languages. You know, it's it's always yeah. nice, and it's also nice to to dive into the culture of the mm -hmm. country you're visiting. You know. I also have a friend and whenever mm -hmm. he go to different country, uh, he start to learn Thai Bahasa. So Bahasa is the language in Malaysia. Okay. And even he also recognized that English is spoken in Vietnam is very different from uh, Singapore as well, because in Singapore they speak singlet. So it's also <laughs> what? English, but it's just what? singlet. <laughs> singlet. It's, 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 yeah. uh, it sounds like this. Uh, did, do you remember this game called Sims? Like their language that they spoke, it was Simlish or something. I think at least in yeah, German Simlish. they were called Simlish. Yeah. Simlish is, is the English. combination of Singapore and English. Oh, so it's Simlish because people that. speak English in the structure of Chinese or Mandarin. Mm. So mm. for example, like uh, they would not ask you where do you want to go, oh. but they would ask you, you go where? Oh my god, okay, you go where? <laughs> Just imagine like asking that like in English. You go where? Lynn? Yeah. You go where? <laughs> say, like, with exactly. an accent, like with an American accent. You go where, Lynn? My friend, so he was like an English teacher and when he first uh, heard the sentence, he has to be paused like five minutes because he, do <laughs> he don't know how to respond to that question. I think you just have to say it in the right accent and everything makes sense after a while. I don't, <laughs> exactly. I don't know. Yeah, and also very important that maybe you can try to speak their English accent in their country. I think it would really help you to plan in the, the culture as well. Like uh, Singapore is also like a very rich, like all the rich people. Oh, I think it's this like is a... where they uh, film Crazy Rich Asians. Oh, oh my God, I love that movie. Yes, yes it was. Like all the rich people, oh my God, living the Alive. I wish I could relate <laughs> to the rich people live. It's so nice.
coming from the, you know, like the country with the alphabet is in Latin work. And you study Japanese and Korea. I think that's totally mind blowing because it's so difficult for me even to learn Mandarin. Yeah, I think it's also so difficult because like in, I think in Chinese, like all the kanji letters, um, every sign stands for a word sometimes, like uh, for a dog or for fire or something. You just need like one symbol and you can express so much and like i'm always trying like to to read in my little smart book and be like okay how can i memorize this better and then you have like a word like father and like the sign looks so funny it's like a, a guy with like a beard and then you can mm -hmm. like memorize it because it's like a father usually has like a beard and looks like a an old man like a fatherly person you know and mm -hmm. so nice you know but um, yeah. of course very difficult and um I think it needs time and you uh, have to be very into it, of course, to, mm -hmm. to make it work after a while. Yeah. I hope. I hope. Uh, wish me luck. I need to, to finish this language. I need to master it, you know, like I always type in like how to learn Japanese in four months or less. <laughs> I'm just like, oh. <laughs> It's a bit difficult. I need to put a lot of work into this, I guess. Uh, There's no shortcut for you. I, I guess not. No, I don't know how people do that, actually. Like, um, like on YouTube, there are so many like tutorials or something and people are mm -hmm. like, oh, yeah, this is how I learned Japanese in like half mm -hmm. a year. And I'm just like, wow, you're ambitious. Mm -hmm. And like they are like working or like studying like six hours a day to, to improve. Mm -hmm. And I'm just like, oh, my God, I'm like, I'm like trying to practice like before I go to work, like 10 minutes, five words a day. And I'm like, I'm good to go. I'm like, oh, that, will, that will do. I'm all right. At that time, were your motivation is about the culture or is about, uh, as you mentioned, like the music, the movies, or is there any other reason that why you want to learn the language or you just want to study it so that you can go traveling? I think uh, a lot of factors are playing into this uh, situation, you know, like uh, when it came to like learning Korean, like I think I was like 15, 16 or something. And my very dear friend, Vanessa, she was already so much into K-dramas, into K-pop and everything. And she introduced me into this and it was like, it was a whole new world, you know, I never heard Korean before. And I was just like, that sounds so, that sounds so weird, you know, like when you never heard something like this before, you're just like, what the hell is that? Now I think like, it's such a beautiful language. Like you just have to be open-minded about it. And uh, yeah, I think like, of course I want to understand the people. I want to communicate with people. I want to uh, be able to find my way around, you know, like, um, like I think it's very re rewarding when you can uh, when you can read the letters and like at least understand a bit you know of it like um, it's so nice it's such a nice experience and also um, when you are in this country and you are trying to make an effort you know you're like trying to speak your very poorly Korean everybody is just like losing their mind they're like oh my god you speak Korean and you're like sure <laughs> I'm I'm native I'm native speaker Korean that's all right. And like everybody, like seriously, it's it's funny how fast you can find friends if you're like just trying to to give your your all, like putting your heart into it, and it's it's so nice, you know. I think when I travel, I want to get the whole experience, you know, mm. like diving into the culture, into the language, like into everything. Like I want mm -hmm. to experience, like I don't know what they do, like oh karaoke, going to sing karaoke, like just just try to be like a sponge and like uh, get suck everything in. Very re rewarding, I think. My parents, they weren't even able to, like they, they never been farther mm -hmm. from home than I think Spain or something. And it's like mm -hmm. ages ago, it's crazy. And they're like, oh my God, like it's crazy. Like what we're able to do nowadays, you know, like mm -hmm. in terms of globalization and stuff. Yeah, I think that's really beautiful that you are open your heart to new culture, especially mm -hmm. some culture which are really different from what you are growing up in. Yeah. Did you speak any uh, Koreans when you visited uh, South Korea? Yeah. Is the life in South Korea there is different than what you always imagine? I think it was like uh, right at the beginning, like when I landed there, like I, I traveled with uh, with my best friend Anna, of course. Um, and we wanted to visit Vanessa uh, in, in, in Seoul and we got there like after a very long flight and um, I think the first time we were just like flabbergasted we were like we couldn't believe that we were there and everything looked so different like 
it was just like a cultural shock, you know, it was crazy. And like, I think at this moment, like maybe it was because we didn't sleep enough in this uh, plane, you know, or maybe it was just everything was too much. We were quite young, I think only 23 or 24 our first big journey, you know, and like when we got there and saw like when I saw the houses and everything, I was just like, oh my God, where am I? Like it was crazy. Um, but yeah, it took some time, but I think we kind of managed to get along, you know, like we, we were lucky that our friend Vanessa was studying Korean, uh, like the mm. Korean language and that she could actually speak Korean quite well. We managed to get along as well, but it's different, you know, but I kind of like these experiences like even more nowadays because like back then I was quite young and everything but now I'm open, even more open you know than I was and uh, I don't know I just want to to travel to as many places and uh, mm -hmm. see so many nice stuff meet new people of course because I think that's also very nice like a very nice experience to get along with some with some people like native people there and we met a few of course and uh went to eat some nice Korean barbecue, karaoke bars, mm. wear a mask. Like every, I think every night we went to one of those small karaoke bars. Oh my God, we ate bingsu, which is some kind of ice cream. Oh my God, it was like, ah, it was a dream, you know, maybe someday we will return. Like, it's always like, oh, remember when we went to Seoul? Oh my God, we were so young, it was so nice, let's go back. <laughs> yeah, but like first, I guess we need the money. Of course, um, back then, I think we were working, like that's why we could like afford this. But mm -hmm. then I started my studies here in Berlin and I was poor as hell. And now I'm starting to, to like, you know, like being a full time worker, employee and stuff. I, I earned some money and hopefully soon I'll be able to travel even more. You know, I'm, I'm still kind of young. <laughs> Am I though? <laughs> but um, but yeah, I think it's it's nice to also experience this kind of stuff with very good friends of yours, like because mm -hmm. I don't know if I would be able to travel to such a faraway place and be like, oh yeah, I'm on my own. I want to to see everything. Like I I don't even go to the cinema by myself. I just feel more comfortable when people are around me uh, that know what's what's up. And I think they think exactly the same. Like oh, at least I I got her with me. She knows what she's doing. And I think. Oh, at least I have her with me. She knows what she's doing and we mm. both don't know what we're doing. But somehow we kind of managed to get along, you know, it's um, it's crazy, but it's nice. I also went there for, um, I think, a couple of days. I really like the chicken stew that they have <gasps> with some of the chingsen. Oh, oh my God. I think God. it's one of the best uh, Chingsen chicken porridge oh. that I ever tried. So but good. Can you handle spicy food though? Because like everything yeah, is so I spicy. Could. Oh, isn't that nice? How convenient for you. Because I was most of the time like losing my mind. It was so <laughs> spicy. Like we were always like not so spicy. And uh, I was, it was so spicy still. Like uh -huh. it was crazy. But you, you could handle it, yeah. Which level you can handle? <laughs> oh my God. I, I think I'm still not that good in it. But you know, like um, when I started all of this, uh, I couldn't even handle, I think, kimchi, like eating kimchi, the, the most common dish, mm -hmm. you know, the mm -hmm. Korean dish. And now I'm like, oh yeah, the kimchi, it's so nice. You know, I think you you, you have to slowly get used mm. to everything and maybe someday we can eat some very spicy chicken yeah. or something. Like I was just losing my mind. It's crazy. I think the chick, uh, the ginseng chicken was not spicy at all. It's oh, I see, I see. Yeah, what are yeah, yeah. usually like the very spicy uh, things? Like I think yeah. like very but spicy. Most of them are very spicy, but not that yeah. one. So I just had like the very spicy food and you had the not so spicy food. Isn't that nice? <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Like we, we ate the, um, a very like a soup that was served very cold with ice cubes in it. It was crazy. And you were cutting the noodles with the scissors. It was so spicy. Oh my God. Like I I'd never eaten like something so spicy. And it was cold as well. Like maybe if it would have been like hot, it would have been something different. But it was so weird because it was cold, but not really. It was just spicy. It's crazy. It's not. <laughs> Why? But I think the combination of spicy and cold is better than the combination of spicy and hot. <laughs> Probably. It could yeah. be more horrible. But still, but still, I couldn't handle it. Like at least we had Vanessa with us. She was like dealing with everything. Like she just ate our portion, and we were just like, oh, good, good job, and <laughs> trying to, I don't know, cool down from from the pain, you know. <laughs> Okay, and besides food uh, that are too spicy for you, are there any culture shock? 
that you uh, encounters? I think the most heavy thing that really happened was like the first like the first time we went there, like stepping out from the train into the city that looked so completely different than anything I've ever seen in my life. Like everything you're used to here in Germany, it just looked so different, you know. Real culture so shock. I think, no, like everything was so nice, I think. We tried a lot, you know, like we were even wearing those Hanbox, it's called like the traditional um, cost, like not costume. Mm -hmm. It's like the traditional Kleidung. It's like the the clothes, Strat. of course. The, right. Yeah, it's like it's like that because we we wanted to get into the temple for free, you know. And everybody who wore those, they could just pass in free, and it was so nice to wear it, you know. We also stayed in in a temple for like two days, I think. And uh, uh, one very funny story is at that time we were like like in the evening. The the monks told us like, oh yeah. You will have to wake up at like four, the bells will ring and everything, and we will like uh, gather together to pray and everything. And I was like, that's all right. And like, I was like, oh, we'll be fine, right? And my friends, they were like, yeah, we'll be fine. And nobody, not a single soul, was like thinking of setting a damn alarm on their phone. I don't know why. They were like, oh, we will hear the bells, you know, we will be fine. We will wake up in time. It's all right. No, 10 minutes before 4 a.m., one girl, she was waking us up. She was like, it's, it's 10 minutes before 4, like we have to be in the temple in like 10. <laughs> and like, we were like losing our mind. It was also very heavy raining. You know? That's probably the reason why we didn't hear the bells. <laughs> <laughs> it was so crazy. We were just like, oh my God, let's go there. And um, very funny thing is Buddhism, it, uh, it contains that you have to bake like, I think 108 bowls or something for like mm -hmm. true, I don't know, happiness or something. I, like, I mm -hmm. don't know the English word for it, but like for, for eternal freedom. I don't know. It was mm -hmm. very nice. But the, the bowls, they were so exhausting. Oh my God. It was not mm -hmm. like the easy ones that, you know, like, oh yeah, ah, nice to meet you. It was the one like where you where you first like bow normally and then you go on your knees and then you like mm -hmm. on all of your fours mm -hmm. and you're just like oh okay and like i think i could handle like 20 and then it started to be painful you know and we kind of managed to get through this but it was, wow. it, was, it, was it was it was painful and like we we wanted to to use the bathroom afterwards and like all of my friends we were like wobbling <laughs> the stairs down to the to the toilet because like our legs were dead <laughs> It was crazy, but this was kind of a culture shock as well. Like, I mean, it was so nice to to get to know like the the way of the monks and uh, the religion. But it was crazy. 108 bowls and like the way up there, like the way up to the temple. Oh my God, it was like an adventure. Heavy rain, an experience that I will never miss. You know, like till this day, we are like, why were we so silly to not set an alarm? Like, where were we like, no, we will wake up in time. Like, like wisdom I can give out to your um, trustworthy followers. Just, just set your damn alarm. You will not wake up in time at 4 a.m. You will never. And like, just imagine like four other girls in the room. Everybody needs to go to the toilet to get ready. You know, it's oh my god, ten minutes. I don't know how we managed. Just sit your own. You really live to your motto that you really mm. blend in the culture because mm. I've never tried go to the temple and then bow a uh, hundred and eight times. Mm -hmm. myself so I always go to museum and those should go attractions so mm. I've never uh, tried such a local thing that you've done I think that's mm. just a very uh, beautiful experience that you have very nice like every time I'm going somewhere I always want to get to know like the real culture also stuff that mm -hmm. not every tourist is doing it's just so nice to to get to know like the real people behind it. I think it's just a nice way, like you said, blend in and to get the full picture of it, you know? Very fulfilling. And of course it was painful with the 108 <laughs> bells. But I don't know, it was so nice. And uh, the, the whole atmosphere, it was so nice. The waterfall, the water, the heavy <laughs> rain. <laughs> but at least now you have the uh, eternal happiness. I with have. <laughs> at least they told me, but maybe I have to do it more often, you know, I need to, to get like some kind of uh, yoga mattress or something so I can like practice it more often and maybe someday I'll be like, ha, 108, I will do, I don't know, 216 or something, uh, that's nothing, I'll just try my best. But yeah, it's, it's nice, it's rewarding and uh, I think everybody should try it. Try to get out of your way 
also do the fun part, of course, get the whole experience out of it, you know? Yeah, yeah, for sure. The most important thing is to open your heart to yeah. new things. Of course, don't be afraid. Also, if you're afraid to um, use your language, if you think, oh, I practiced the language, but I'm not so good, just try it. You know, people will like give you credit for the effort and they'll be like, oh my God, you speak like you speak Korean or you speak Japanese. That's crazy. And I'm just like, yeah, yes, I do. <laughs> Apparently, I do. I mean, it's enough for like ordering uh, mozzarella in the burger, Juseo. <laughs> Say the word like hamburger, Juseo. <laughs> it's all right. <laughs> and uh, I don't know. Kamsamnida, annyeonghaseyo. To me, you sound like a Korean already. Oh my god. Oh my god. Please stop it. You know, we both know that it's not true, but thank you so much. I appreciate it. Now no, I still, you have yeah. such a good accent, you know? Right? People tell me that as well. Like they, But they always laugh at me. Like when I talk to like, real Koreans, you know, mm -hmm. I don't know, I think they just think, oh, she's so adorable with like trying to be like, <laughs> trying to speak her a little Korean and I'm just like throwing in like the, the most common words like, Otoke, oh, chincha, choma, and they're losing their mind, they're like, oh my god, that's crazy, and I'm just like, you think so? I think I just have very good friends who would think very highly of me, even though I don't really am that good. But you made such a good effort to, to yeah, talk for the language, and uh, I think that's really appreciated. Right? Yeah, I'm trying yeah. my best. And the uh, next step on the ladder of success is Japanese. Like, at least I can say, like, uh, like introduce myself. Hold on. <laughs> It's like, Watashi no namae Natali desu, I think. But I'm not sure. I have to check again, you know? To so in introduce like, your name? Like, Watashi no is like my. Namae is like name, Natalie, mm -hmm. it's like my name, oh. and then it's like this, or like Shimas. Actually, I have no idea. You see, I wanted to like impress you, but you mm -hmm. see, it's like, I'm oh, impressed okay. already. <laughs> like it's probably, please Japanese people, uh, write in the comments if it was correct or not. Leave a, a like and a subscribe for my effort. I'm improving. Please button below. <laughs> Click the link below to uh, for eternal happiness for the 108 volts, you know. <laughs> Your next destination would be Japan mm. then. I'm not sure if it will be Japan, you know, because uh, I, I think it's been, it will be like one or two more years before we can manage mm -hmm. it because like one of our friends, she's still studying and she needs to mm -hmm. save her money, of course. And like a trip to Japan is quite expensive. I mean, especially mm -hmm. like the flights. The flights are always mm -hmm. the most expensive. And so um, my best friend and I, who are always like going on nice road trips, Mm -hmm. We were like uh, thinking of first getting to Ireland because this is actually mm -hmm. the destination that we wanted to go since we were 20, 21 or something. Like, But the thing is, we always wanted to do a road trip in Ireland, but I think you have to be 25 to book like a car or like like mm -hmm. at least like a cheap car or something. And we were just like, oh, that's bullshit. And like we booked a um, car in Scotland, you know. So mm -hmm. we were always like, so Ireland, right? Ireland is like the dream. We wanted to go in 2020, March 2020. Do you guys remember 2020, March? Uh, what kind of what kind of thing happened there, huh? I wonder. Corona. And it was basically, it was like three days before we wanted to fly and everybody was like, locked down. We can't do this shit. And we were like, okay, that's weird. Uh, let's play it safe, play it cool. We will go in September. The whole thing will be done in September, right? <laughs> Everybody thought that. So we were like, okay, postpone it. That's all right. We will go to Ireland eventually. No, we didn't go, you know? And we were trying to get like a, a voucher or something, like to get our money back from the flights. And it took us, I think, like a whole year to get the money back because of course, Corona is still a thing. We just didn't manage to, to get to Ireland. And uh, we were like, oh no, let's do it. Like when, when the whole situation is under control, you know, and still we are like a whole damn mess. But now we hope then maybe somehow we will manage to get there next year. Yeah, let's see how that goes. Like hopefully not another pandemic that's going on, you know, like keep your fingers crossed. But Ireland should be like a dream. Wild stuff, I don't know, cows, <laughs> green hills, <laughs> whiskey. I, I first need to get into it also. I need to go to the next bookstore to get anything. <laughs> I need to try my Irish accent. Like I a, always want to go there, um, but I'm not sure if it's Iceland or Ireland because I want to see the Northern Lights. <laughs> I, think, <laughs> I think you mean like Iceland. Yes, Iceland. that's Iceland. That's, that's so ironic, isn't it? Like Iceland sounds like ice, isn't mm -hmm. it? But it's like yeah. a green island. And then there's Greenland, which is mm -hmm. like a land of ice. You know, it's cold. Isn't that weird? How, what did people think? Yeah, you don't get it, right? It's like 
why did people think like, oh yeah, let's let's call this green, wonderful land, Iceland with ice, and let's call this uh, snowy thing Greenland. Why? It doesn't make sense to me. This is like bothering me like hell. Why would you do that? But okay, so I think you are talking about Iceland, I guess. Yeah, but isn't exactly. Is that also Finland or Norway or something? Can't you like, like see them there as well, the Northern Lights? I don't know why seeing the northern light in Iceland was so popular and mm. uh, I think either people would uh, like you said either go to Norway Tromso, to see the northern light or to Iceland but I definitely would go on a tour nice. and it must look so crazy as well right like out of this world when you watch it I think like something that you've yeah. never seen like it's something that you can only imagine in dreams yeah 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 <laughs> and not even that I'm not very imaginative <laughs> you need to take a lot of pictures for me Lynn please I don't know when uh, I will get there yeah, me too, because I haven't booked a ticket yet, I, but I have planned it to be next year. <laughs> next Everything year should be next year. Yeah, yeah, like next year we'll be fine. I mean, we're already like in the middle of October. It's only like, I think, 10 or 11 more weeks until Christmas. Do you have all your Christmas presents yet? And now I hear uh, Maracari all over oh, again. Oh, yeah, it is oh, the time yeah. of the year. <laughs> It is the time of the year. We need to go sing karaoke this song. It's like, exactly. it's like mandatory. Wham, last Christmas. What do you want to do in Japan? Like I still have to, to get fully into my travel, like Japan travel mm -hmm. guide that I bought from this bookstore. I would really love to, of course, go to Tokyo, like the most mm -hmm. common thing, but like I heard that Kyoto should be also very yeah. nice. I don't know. Like, it's so beautiful. Of course. And like, um, I don't know, have you seen this movie called The Geisha or something? Memoirs of a Geisha? Mm -hmm. There's yeah. a scene where she is running. I think it's also in Kyoto where she is running as a little mm -hmm. child through this um, gate. Bamboo forest. Bamboo gate. Bamboo forest. Like I would love to see the bamboo forest and those gates. Like they, they are like very beautiful. I would love to participate in a, in a traditional tea ceremony also like sleep in a traditional Japanese home, you know, like on the mm -hmm. on the futon. Is it called futon? I don't know, the, the stuff on the, on the floor. Yeah, this is basically the first stuff I would like to do, you know, but I don't know how we can manage everything, you know, because everything is quite far away. I don't know if I'm able to, to drive my way through Japan with a car, you know. I mean, like, I, I've been, mm -hmm. like, uh, driving, of course. Of course, also in uh, on Jeju Island, which is like mm -hmm. the, the famous island in Korea, I was driving with the mm -hmm. car. I don't know, like it wasn't in any big city, you know, and I think it's a different story if you're like driving through very crowded places. Mm. Uh, also when it's like left, uh, like they're driving on the left side, mm -hmm. like in Scotland or England, you know, that's, mm -hmm. uh, that's kind of a thing. Like, I mean, I love to do road trips, but sometimes mm -hmm. I think, oh my God, like, ooh, mm -hmm. Am I really like good in this? I don't know. Let's try. Let's not try not to get killed today. How many road trips have you uh, been to? Uh, the first one and the most beautiful one was mm -hmm. to Scotland because everything mm -hmm. was quite close. Like you could you could drive easily around in a couple of days, and uh, the whole landscapes they were so beautiful and reminded me a bit of like I think Canada. Even though I've never been to Canada, but like shifting landscapes and everything once you thought you were mm -hmm. like in very nice green scenery then you were in the in the mountains or something and you were just mm -hmm. like oh my god in the highlands mm -hmm. it was so pretty this is the the one we always look back to when we're like oh the most beautiful road trip but we also went uh through a road trip through south england which mm -hmm. was hell seriously because we were like oh yeah we could we can drive five hours a day or something we were quite ambitious back then but we um miscalculated the distances and everything and it was mm -hmm. like just we were just hurrying from one place to the other and didn't really like couldn't really enjoy all the places that we were I mean we saw a lot because we were driving mm -hmm. our way down to to Wales as well then on Jeju Island I think Jeju Island was also very nice still a lot of like people because it's quite a mm -hmm. famous island in, in Korea but also there was like a bigger city and I think this was like one time when I nearly built like like one motorcycle nearly drifted into me like they were like cutting me and then I was like oh, what the hell and I was like on the edge and maybe there was a time when I was like oh my god I don't build to drive in the big city like you know uh, but yeah I think so far it's been like three times like like bigger road trips of course like but I would love to go like drive through America you know the route 66 mm. like it would be also nice but also I think you have to calculate a lot of 
long distances, you know. Like, I think it's also important that you have the right people with you when you do road trips or like travel in general, because I think mm -hmm. with some people you are all right when you meet them, but like mm -hmm. spending time with them on like in a car or like uh, mm. on, on traveling, it's like quite difficult sometimes if you don't fully like know how the, how the other person is. And uh, mm -hmm. I just really appreciate it. Shout out to um, to Anna and of course also to Vani because like those were the people I, I did the most road trips with. Mm. And like also to have a lit playlist on your car. This is also very important. Mm. I, give you, I give you road trip advices. It's crazy. Yeah. So <laughs> just get the right music and like, mm -hmm. try not to kill each other. Try not to do an accident <laughs> and you'll be fine. Bring a lot of snacks and uh, I don't know, everything will be good, you know. Yeah. Did, did you make any road trips like before? I've been to two road trips in uh, Europe. So the first one in 2019, when we do a road trip in Salzburg and Ooh. to Königsee. And the road was extremely beautiful. But then I have to get back for our classes. So that's why mm -hmm. I missed most of the trip. But I was so happy that I was in the trip. And recently we went to Croatia. Ooh. The scenery was also nice and uh, you can see the landscape also changing from oh. one place to another. And also they have like the uh, national park. So you have to drive a really long oh. distance in order to get to the national park. This CV, I couldn't pronounce it, but uh, it's <laughs> beautiful. It's just like on movies, the fall, dream falling down. Oh. So surreal to me and the water oh so clean and everything. Yeah, That's so, so I nice. really love it. I always think like, oh, invest into the memories you make, you know, like mm -hmm. I mean all the stuff that you are buying all right but like ah oh, those memories they will stick with you for a while you know it's so nice yeah like it's, I think it's, that it's would stick burns. with me just yeah. forever yeah 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 it's like it's just like uh, in your mind all the time and always like mm -hmm. oh you remember that it was so nice yeah. and like and you would be always happy when when you think about it and yeah. I, I think this is something that money can never buy right oh my god the wisdom damn yeah put it on the little pillow or something like you can like needle it sew it into a pillow and be like here wisdom for ya put it on your sofa on your couch have it with ya i love that seriously like a very nice thing like i couldn't like put it better into words yeah that's why i put all of my money to traveling yeah but I mean, i'm I, always broke <laughs> yeah but you're traveling so much like i always just see your your pictures on instagram and i'm just like oh it must be nice to have the free time and the money i mean you're broke but like at least you can do it you are there you know i don't care if i'm broke if i'm like broke in paris or like broken <laughs> london or something i mean what else could be better to be broken somewhere else not where you live you know and <laughs> just forget about trouble just be broke somewhere else not at home i really enjoy talking to you uh, me uh, too, my dear. I, I think that you also have to have a good rest uh, so now <laughs> it's come to the last part of the podcast oh my and god I would always ask my guests two questions, but because I always regarded you as my dear friend, so I, oh. I'm gonna ask three questions today. Oh my God, I'm feeling a bit of pressure now, but shoot, I'm ready. Okay. Hit me. So the first question, which city, if you're gonna live there for the rest of your life? Oh my or God. Or which country? <laughs> oh my God, the most difficult one. Uh, you know? Um, I think maybe it's because like it was our first big trip and it was such a marvelous city. I would like to to actually live in Scotland. Uh, mm. How the how the Scottish people say um, Edinburgh, I think. Mm. <laughs> like like Edinburgh. Not, Edin not Edinburgh. Like we we tried to like pronounce it like Edinburgh, but no, mm -hmm. the people were like, what 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 did you just say? And we were like Edinburgh. No, they were like Edinburgh. I think like you have to like pronounce it very very fast you know and nobody mm -hmm. will ask you more questions but oh my god it was so nice you know the like it's so beautiful like the old castle when it's mm -hmm. like a bit like raining like it's so like like a bit spooky as well but also people there oh mm -hmm. my god I, I just loved it you know like it's such an old town but it's like mm -hmm. oh, it's so charming like oh, I lost my heart in Scotland, you know I, oh, Scotland so I would say like like if you are trying to check something out, Scotland is the place like where you should definitely like go. It's crazy. It's so okay. I will take your advice. 
I really want to go just yeah. to Scotland Seriously. after this podcast. Right. <laughs> just book your tickets already. You can be broke in Scotland. Why not? Thanks for the answer. And the second question is, so you can pick whoever, your friends, celebrities, who you want to pick for your next trip. Oh my God. You know, like I have to say it now, but like my best friend, Anna, of course, Aww. like she is like, uh, like, sorry, but Anna and I, this is like a 100% count on her. I don't know. It's just so fun to be around with her. She's like the I don't know, this sounds quite cheesy, but she's like the Chewbacca to my Han Solo or something. She's a great <laughs> co-pilot. <laughs> she's always like, I don't know, taking care of me and I'm taking care of her. It's just so nice. Like, Anna, shout out to you, girl. It was amazing. I can't wait for the next road trip. <laughs> Please, let's go soon. Please, let's be broke in, I don't know, Japan or something. I know she won't be, but it's like, let's 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 go. Let's travel somewhere soon, okay? This goes out to me. Oh. I will send her the link to the podcast. I hope she <laughs> appreciates it. <laughs> that is very sweet of you. Mm. I think that uh, Anna would definitely uh, love the answer and would right. love to go on the next trip with you. She would be just sure. like, oh my God, this goes right into the fields. You know, this is what she would say. <laughs> I, I can, oh no, she would say like, this goes right into the, there's like a meme with a cat and the cat is like with the paw. On his heart and the cat is so like this goes right into the meow meow which i probably say now <laughs> i hope so anna i hope i'm right i am right right the last question is right now if you can transport yourself to any place where would any. you want to transport right now at this right very moment now. maybe to bed no it's all right <laughs> It's quite late already. It's way past my bedtime. I have to go. Like seriously, like the next big thing I really want to go and that I'm really excited about mm -hmm. is like Japan, you know? Mm -hmm. Like I would just love to be there. Like, but on the other hand, like I would want to have like my friends with me. Like I don't want mm -hmm. to make the experience all by myself. So of course, yeah. Maybe, yeah. So yeah, like, like Japan is like on the on the next list. I hope Ireland as well. But I don't know Ireland. <laughs> I, I only believe it when we're already there. You know, there were so many obstacles in a way. Mm -hmm. I wish you uh, and all of the trip would uh, come very soon to you. And of course, with your favorite person together, because I think uh, all of the memory from the trip were made from people. Right. Yeah, I think so too. Yeah. And it's also mm -hmm. nice to share it with people that you that you care about, that you love, you know, that are special to you. It's always just so nice not to make the experience all by yourself, but with, with other people. And the last word to all of the audience, what would you say to them to encourage them to venture into the world? Don't be afraid to make mistakes, you know. Um, try to embrace the culture, try to get as many experiences as you can. Befriend people that live there, um, try out uh, this handball site where you can meet people from, from other countries. Quite funny because like Anna and I, we, we had some handballs in Korea and we met them actually and it was so funny because we already had like people that we could like spend time with and go to karaoke sessions and stuff. And it's also very nice, you know, like just try to be yourself, but also be open-minded about the culture. Don't be all too like, oh no, I don't eat that. Even if it's spicy, try it. <laughs> I think the best advice is just be open-minded and try to get as much stuff in as you can and you will be mm -hmm. rewarded. Yeah, that's my, cool. yeah, right. It's not pillow worthy so still. That's so beautiful. Like, oh my, it's, it's, come on. God, you just say that. No. It's not pillow worthy. It's not Lynn pillow worthy. No, no sentences on my own pillow now. But it's all right. Oh, but mine is very cheesy. But right. yours no, uh, is straight like, to the point. Yeah, it's nice. You know, it's, it's just nice. I always like to be straight to the point. Thank you yeah. so much for your time. I really it enjoy was. it. And it was, my uh, pleasure. it was my pleasure. Thank you so much for having me. Seriously, I really enjoyed it also to catch up with you a bit, you know. I wish you uh, with that spirit that you have, you would have any great trip <gasps> in the future to oh Iceland, to Japan or anywhere. Oh my God. Thank you so much, Lynn. You're like the best. You're, uh, you're so wholesome. Oh my God. This goes straight into the meow meow. And don't forget to send this episode to your friend, Anna. No, of course not. Of course not. Like, I will send it to everybody I know. I will be like, oh, so I've been invited to a podcast. You want to hear me? And people will be probably like, uh, no. And I'm just like, well, here you go. And they have to listen to this. 
<laughs> but seriously, like I had such a good time. I think your podcast is a very good idea. And I think a lot of people will hear this and be like, ha, huh, this is nice. You know, like all of your episodes, it's like, it's a nice idea. And uh, I think it's nice, especially nowadays to have something to, to put your mind into it and like to talk about stuff that you want to do later on, you know, to, to make plans and dreams. And uh, it's, it's a very nice podcast idea, I think. And I hope that she will be so successful. Number one on the Spotify playlist uh, ranking list. And uh, yeah, all my luck and the best I wish for you. Mm -hmm.